Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening everybody. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and to another installment in the Enskull Railroad build in my workshop. If you're watching last time, you'll have seen me get some rough scenery installed and get all the rock carving done. This week I'm going to get that area finished. So without further ado, let's just head out to the workshop and get busy. Well today's task is to get the initial wash colours on the rock work. I have a black wash and a dark brown wash mixed up and have my spray bottle full of water. If you recall from previous videos I had started putting the black wash in a second spray bottle and going at it with both hands but unfortunately I only currently have one serviceable spray bottle. I had to throw the other one out today so I'm just gonna have to do it with a brush. Not to worry it's only a small area but before I get on with that there was one other little task I had to take care of. You look down here I have inserted the culvert through the wall. If you recall from before, I'm arguing that this is basically a dry canyon and the only time it ever gets any water down there is when it rains. So a pipe culvert is a lot cheaper than a big bridge. That was just a simple matter of drilling a hole through the plaster casting and then inserting a short piece of tube. So anyway, with no further detours, Let's just get back on to the coloration of the rocks. Don't go away. Well, that is the black and dark brown washes applied. Since the rock in the area the client wants to represent is a lot browner than most rocks, I've gone more heavily on the brown stain. In fact, I did the two simultaneously. As I mentioned nearly every time, this is what I call the ugly stage of the painting. It will look a lot better once the dry brushing is done but that can't be done until this is completely dry, as its name would imply. I just put the bridge in just to give an idea of the scale of everything and what it looks like. I think this will look quite dramatic once it's done. So anyway, I'm gonna go inside now and I will see you again tomorrow. Don't go away. Well, it's been a couple of days since I made a clip. I came out yesterday and it didn't seem to be completely dry. Not only that, but there was a large area in the middle that hadn't taken the stain very well and it was still mostly white so I redid that and I painted the retaining walls, the concrete ones and went over some of the lighter spots on the stone ones as well. The rocks in the area the client wants us to represent are a lot darker than most of those I've seen in other photographs so I'm trying to reflect that in the colouring. Also a lot browner so I'm going to be dry brushing with mostly brown tones. I think I'll start with a bit of a light grey and then I'll go brown tones after that, bearing in mind that the later dry brush coats cover up most of the earlier ones. It's not a big area, I'm going to take my time, try to make a really good job of it. So let me just turn the camera off and I will be right back. Don't go away. Well there is the area with four different dry brush coats on the rocks. I started off with elephant grey which is a, a plain mid grey. Then I went to a brown oxide with a little bit of chocolate bar added to give it more of a red colour. Then I went with pavement grey on the concrete retaining walls just to lighten up the buff colour. And then I mixed up a cream colour you can use antique white. I didn't have any so I just added a small amount of light khaki to plain white and that has about the same effect. Anyway I think that rock is now about the colour that I'm aiming for so I'm going to call that job done. I've still got to come back and put the soot stains over the tunnel portals but I think I will do that as a final detailing step. In the meantime I've got to get the sculptor mold on in all the dirt areas and I also have to find some regular dirt to put over it. So I'm going to have to go find some of that in my backyard and then give it time to dry. So let me do all that and I will be right back. Don't go away. Well that is the first batch of sculptor mold mixed up and spread out. I started with all the small areas because up here, where I'm going to use a large quantity of it, I can cheat the amount somewhat. 
So getting all the small areas done early avoids the risk of having to mix up a ridiculously small batch just to complete the job at the end. And also it gives me a good idea of how big a batch to mix for this area. So I think I'm going to do the same again and then I should be done. So don't go away, I will be right back. Well that is the sculpt mold step finished. One more batch, the same size as the first one, it was perfect to covering in here. All I can sensibly do now is wait for that to go a little bit hard. It doesn't have to dry completely, but I need to be able to paint the surface with white glue before I sprinkle the dirt on. So I'm gonna go inside now, work on a layout design, and I'll be back out either later on today or tomorrow morning. Either way, don't go away. I will check in with you then. Well, I'm back again a lot sooner than expected. Despite my best efforts to ensure that I ended up on this big area at the top where I could make up any extra or shortfall quite easily, I was just about to go inside. I'd already cleaned up my tools when I realized I hadn't done the bottom of this deep fissure in the cliff. So I had to mix up a small batch to go in there. And of course, now I have stuff left over, which I'm gonna throw away. I hate doing that. Oh well, that's the way things go sometimes. So this time I really do plan on leaving it until later. So don't go away, I will be right back. Hopefully later rather than earlier. Well, after giving the sculptor mold time to dry overnight, Today's task is to cover it with dirt and then other layers of ground cover. First step is to paint full strength white glue, which is there all over the sculptor mold areas and everywhere else on the bare rocks where I want to put dirt as well. For example, there's a big level spot here, which I will put dirt on it. Here is my sifted dirt. I found some outside yesterday that was pretty red which I want for this area because the rocks are fairly red in color, meaning the dirt would be as well. Anyway, I got lucky because even though I had no intentions of installing it yesterday, I decided to collect it up before I went in and a couple of hours later had some torrential rain here. We had several inches over the space of a few hours. So the area that I got the dirt from ended up a complete quagmire and I would have had to have put the dirt in the oven to dry it. Anyway, I avoided that step by getting lucky. So let me just get back to work and I'll check in with you again soon. Don't go away. Well, that is all the big areas covered with dirt. I still have to sprinkle some more on all the rock ledges, but that will be part of the ground cover stage, which will get glued down by diluted scenic glue but I need to go inside and get some ground foam so I can apply that at the same time. That way I only have to put the glue on once instead of twice. So let me go inside, get what I need, and I'll be right back. Don't go away. Well, that is the whole area with the ground cover done. And that is all I can do this session. All I can sensibly do now is go inside and leave it for the glue to dry. And then I'll come out tomorrow, run a vacuum cleaner over it, and see what I have left. More than likely, I will need to scrape excess greenery out of the drainage ditches beside the track, but that's easy to do, and that will be part of the ballasting step, which I will schedule for tomorrow. So don't go away, I will check in with you then. Well, I have now removed the masking tape from the track on both the upper and lower grades. I've run a vacuum cleaner along the track also to get rid of any loose debris. And I've inserted the missing ties. Hopefully you can't see them too well in this view. It's the black ones that are not painted. I'm gonna leave them black because it doesn't really matter. The ties tend to vary in color anyway. The main task for this morning is to get the track ballasted. So I'm gonna get on with that. You may recall that I did the tunnels before I installed them because it'd be impossible to reach in there afterwards. So let me get the ballasting tools out and I will be right back. Don't go away. Well, once again, after a few more minutes of work, I am back to waiting until tomorrow. 
That is unfortunately the nature of just doing a small area. Normally I like to work on much bigger areas of scenery, but this is all the scenery I'm doing on this railroad. So don't go away. I will check in with you again tomorrow. Well, I have given everything plenty of time for the glue to go nice and hard, and it has. Everything's properly dry now. There's a few more tasks on my list for today. I have already cleaned off the track and test run the locomotive on all three routes. That is fine. I need to put weathering stains over the tunnel portals on the upper single track and on the uphill track only of the lower grade. Then I'm going to plant some trees, a few small bushes, reinstall the bridge, and then touch up the ballast at that end. And that, I think, will be everything. I'm not going to put anywhere near as many trees on this one as I did on the last scenic area that I did. Just a few in the gully and a few up here just to separate the two tracks visually and the client will take it from there. So let me just get back to work and I'll be right back. Don't go away. Once again, I am back to waiting. I realized there was something else I needed to do before I installed the trees, and that is to touch up the backdrop and paint a tree line along it. So I did that first. The paint I use is the cheap apple barrel paint from Walmart, 50 cents a tube and it's Christmas green with a spot of black added. Don't ask me for a formula because I don't have one. Anyway, then I planted 40 trees. There's nothing magic in the number. I just kept going until I thought I had enough. I deliberately haven't put anything on the plateau, just in case the client wants to do something different up there. And I have not put anything along the front track either because that's close to the river that has not been detailed yet and can't really be done until the next section of scenery is installed. So that's why I haven't gone down there. Anyway, the bridge has been glued in place and weighted down while the glue sets. These toothpicks are necessary for some of the trees that don't want to stand up straight. I will pull those out when the glue is dried and then tomorrow I will come back out and I will ballast that last two inch piece of track. And then I am going to call that done. I will start dismantling it for collection. So don't go away, I will be right back tomorrow. Well I came out again late last night and I touched up the ballast at the entrance to the bridge. So this is all done. I think I am now just about ready to dismantle it for shipping. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to touch up the fascia in this one location. The nature of scenery work is that fascia touch-up is always necessary afterwards. Well, that didn't take long. I have returned the fascia to pristine condition in that area because I want the client to get it in that condition. Next thing I've got to do is pack everything up. This view gives some idea of the amount of components that go into even a small area of scenery. That bench is at least 10 times the size of the area of scenery that I've been doing. So I guess this is a good time to sign off and I will see you next time.
Well, that's all for this week. I hope you enjoyed the show and found it interesting or useful or both. And that also completes the build of this layout, or at least everything that I've been contracted to do. In the next instalment, I will get it taken apart and packed up ready for shipping. So I hope to see you then. In the meantime, thanks for watching and bye for now.